Um, the purpose of this entire workshop this evening, this beautiful night, was called Anchoring in the Quran. The idea is profound, y'all. The idea is that the world will shake you. There will be waves that come. That's implicit in the nature of this dunya by design. There are waves coming left and right. And you are that vessel. You are that boat. And that boat will be pushed around and it will go wherever the waves take it. Whether it's an abusive parent, whether it's a ne negligent spouse, whether it's not getting into the school you want it to, not getting the job you want it to, not getting the rishta, the, the wifey you wanted to get, right? Or the husband. Those waves will push you around. But here's the thing. If we're anchored, if we're anchored to the Quran with the themes and the concepts and the meaning of the Quran, then no matter what, you stay where you want to be and where you need to be, no matter where the waves push. The last topic was about sabr, about patience. And subhanAllah, my topic is something that I've been struggling with lately too. It's the topic of gratitude, the topic of shukr. And I want to go deep this evening. You guys are college students, you're intelligent people. And I want us to walk away this evening with a changed perspective on, on shukr, on gratitude. The opposite of gratitude is kufr. It's kufr. In the Quran, many places, the word kufr, where we use and think it means disbelief, it actually means to be ungrateful. And the meaning of kufr is to cover up a seed, right? To cover up, like the farmer in Arabic has the same root letters because you put the seed in the ground, but you cover it up. See, the person that shakar, they, 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 they let things show. They let the blessing shine. They let them be seen. Shaitan loves nothing more than to see you upset. Shaitan loves nothing more than to see you sad. One of the most amazing sunnas of the Rasul alayhi salatu was salam. And I love what Shaykh Abdurrahman said. He said, you cannot connect to the Qur'an without connecting to the Habibullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You cannot connect to the meaning unless you connect to him. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had every reason to be salty, y'all. Y'all say salty in Windsor? Salty? All right, well, I don't know. Up north it'd be changing. We the north, all that, you know all the stuff. He had every reason to be upset. Life pushed so many hard things at him. Didn't know his father. Lost his mother at the age of six. At the age of six, you remember stuff. Think of your little brother. Think of your little sister. Yay, the six, you remember. I see my child who's, who's eight. Then, he's, then he moves on. He's with his grandfather. Grandfather brings him and loves him. Loses his grandfather at the age of eight, nine. Time after time, we see calamity after calamity after hardship. But what is so amazing about this man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what is so amazing about him, and what can be amazing about you is that the Sahaba said, we never saw him except he was smiling. <coughs> smiling. What does a smile do? I read this hadith and, and I was struggling with stuff. We're all struggling. Whether I'm here or whether you're there, we're all struggling. We're all on this battle to fight shaitan. And, and when I, when I reread this sunnah, that he would smile, I just started smiling at weird times, and I look mad weird. I'll just be walking, I'll just, you know what I mean? And people are like, yo, what's this, stay away. But I'll just be driving home from work, and, and at that moment, shaitan in the dunya is making you focus on what you don't have, what's not going right. And then I would remember this sunnah to just smile, where my nafs is saying, be salty right now. Walk in the home salty at my little kids for no reason, Wifey's all happy, but I'm just like, whatever. No, smile. And I started to act on this, and I noticed how much it changed who I was as a person. Shaitan loves nothing more than for us to be upset. What does he do? He makes us number one. Number one, forget our blessings. Forget our blessings. He makes us forget where we were before. Here you are having issues with wifey. I want you to think back to when you were a college student wishing for nothing more than to have someone to love. Oh, oh y'all are college students, my bad. <laughs> my bad, bro. You'll get through it, don't worry, Habibi. You'll get through it, it's, it'll be cool, you'll be good. 
We, we, <laughs> we, want, we, we forget. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says specifically about the spousal relationship. Allah says never, for, and this is in the topic of divorce. In the topic of divorce, Allah says, never forget the bounty you had on each other. Never forget. So shaitan, first thing he does is make you forget. So what do you need? How will you anchor yourself? Number one, you need people around you that will never let you forget how blessed you are. I'm going to say that again. You need people around you. If you're ace, like, like Sheikh Abdullah is not here. I call up Sheikh Abdullah. He'll, he'll remind me of the blessings. He'll remind me of the blessings that I have. You have to have people that will remind you, yo, why are you complaining right now? Yo, you're blessed. Someone close to you. Never ever forget the blessings that have been given to you. What else does he do? Listen to this. Never let shaitan tell you your narrative. Never let him tell you your story. Oh, you were oppressed. Oh, your parents weren't there for you. Oh, they don't like you because, you're, you, you, because you don't fit into their culture. La, never let shaitan tell you your story. Uh, most beautiful moment from the seerah for me. Most beautiful moment is the moment where the Prophet Sallallahu walks in smiling. It's the Meccan days. We don't even have a reason to smile in Mecca, y'all. There's no reason to smile in Mecca. It's nothing but hardship. He walks into the group of, 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 of people in Dar al-Arqa and he's smiling. And everyone's like, what's up, Ya Rasulullah? What's going on? He says, Undur kayfa uh, saraf Allah shatima Quraysh anni, o kama qal. He says, look how Allah has pushed away the curses of, uh, of Quraysh from me. They used to make fun of him. And they used to call him what? Mudhamdam, Mudhamdam. Because his name is Muhammad, they would switch it, say the opposite, the blameworthy one. He knew who they were talking to, but he never ever empowered a person to take away his joy. Never empower someone to take away your joy. Never ever. My heart is too precious for me to let you or anyone who cut me off in traffic take away my joy. Yo. I don't even know you. I don't even know you. One time, it was an imam, one of the shuyuk probably know, he wrote a letter to another scholar because people used to always keep beef going, you know, between scholars. So someone wrote a letter to a scholar and said, I heard this imam, I heard you, he, he wrote a letter, he said, I heard you were backbiting me. The scholar wrote a letter back, he said, I don't love you that much. <laughs> I don't love you that much. How dare you allow people to take away your joy? What shaitan does is he tells you the story. Listen to this story. Lost, lost your father before you knew who he was. Lost your mother right when you needed her the most. Lost your grandfather just when you thought you had someone. Sounds like a bad story, but that same man smiled through everything. So shaitan will do what? So I was finishing the story. The prophet, so I said him, comes in smiling. He knows who they're talking about. He's not oblivious to that but he's not giving them the strength to take away his joy so that he can re remain grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listen to this. There's three things when it comes to shukr. And I want you to remember these and never forget them. Never forget them and come back to this lecture whenever you need to. There's three things with every blessing. There's the ni'mah, the blessing. There's the one who's blessed. And there's the blesser. The first thing I want to do is highlight on the ni'mah itself, the blessing. Listen to this. The objective of the blessing is not the blessing itself. It's the one who gave it to you. I'll, let me give you an example. There's a hadith, one of my favorite. Where Rasulullah Sallallahu says, Ta'isa abdu dina wa abdu dirham. Rasulullah Sallallahu says, may the, may the slave of the dollars... May the slaves of dollars, gold and silver, may they be destroyed. Money is a blessing. Everywhere in the Quran where it says fadl, 90% of the places where it says bounty is talking about money. So, money is a blessing. So many hadith speak about the blessing of wealth. But here's the deal. And this is what I need you to understand. You can't make the blessing the objective of your life. 
Everyone's blessed. The disbeliever, the believer, the Christian, the Jew, the Muslim, everyone has blessings. But only some people use the blessing to connect back to Allah. That whip, that's a blessing. But when you worship the car, when you worship the dollar, when you worship the beauty, when you worship how handsome you are, mashallah, <coughs> when you worship how handsome you are, I normally point to Abdurrahman, but you know, he's always, he's getting big headed now. So <laughs> I had to point to somebody else today. I've been calling him handsome too much, so I don't get big headed. See, that's the thing. Rasul Sallallahu he's on one hand, he's saying wealth is a blessing. On another whole hadith, he says, may the one who worships the dollar be cursed because some people get the dollar and the dollar is their God. And, and what's amazing is the end of the hadith. He says, he says, in, in u'tiya, radiya. Tell me, is this you? This is deep. If you get it, they're happy. And if they don't get it, they don't get happy. That is how the prophet defined. For me and you, the blessing is a sign that I'm loved by the beloved. If Allah takes the blessing away, my beloved took it away, I'm good. It wasn't about the blessing. It was about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't make the blessing the objective, the job, the, the marriage, the wealth. Don't make the blessing the objective. Because Allah may take that away, but that doesn't mean he loves you any less. Doesn't mean he loves you any less. The other crazy part about that is this. Those who worship the blessing, when they lose the blessing, they lose purpose. I'm going to run that back so you could tweet it if you want. <laughs> Those who worship the blessing, the job, their academic career, their wealth, their status, their name, whatever. There's a lot of gods out there. Because there's a lot of blessings out there. Yo, y'all not feeling me, yo. You're not feeling me. There's a lot of gods out there because there's a lot of blessings out there. Because people make the blessings to God. And so what I'm trying to highlight here is if the blessing becomes the God, when the blessing is gone, you lose purpose. But for the one who always kept their sight on the bestower, Let's run it back to Sheikh's talk. Sheikh's talk about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Ta'if. He's, he's bloodied, head to toe, stoned, stoned. They were throwing rocks at his ankle, so, so the rock hits the, the bone. His, his son, Zayd bin Haritha, is right there trying to protect him. He collapses in the garden outside. And he says this profound dua. He, he makes this profound supplication. The, the climax of it is, if you're happy, I don't even care. If you're happy, I don't even care. And then he, he puts a PS at the end, but I would love some afia right now. I would love some tranquility right now. Just a PS at the end. If you're happy, I'm good. You see what I'm saying? The acceptance for some of us, acceptance from our family, acceptance from someone, all of us, we're ch many of us are chasing acceptance. We need likes. We need affirmation from exterior. The Prophet said in this moment was rejected by people. Rejected the way he was rejected by all the wet nurses other than Halima. He was rejected. And what in that moment does he say? He says, you know what, Allah? It hurts, but low-key, I don't care as long as you're happy. Which means he never lost sight of the goal. Never lost sight of the goal. So the blessings will come, but don't make your life about the blessings. Because then when the blessing is taken away, you won't be able to see the other blessing that low-key was coming behind it. Do you feel me? The next thing is the uh, munam, the one given the blessing. See, the Quran speaks, anchoring in the Quran, the Quran speaks about a mentality. I'm loud, Habibi, I'm loud. Y'all can hear me, no? Okay, I'll try, sorry. The Quran speaks about this mentality that happens. And we all fall susceptible to it, but you, we gotta talk about it. It's when you start getting blessings, you get accepted, you get the job, you get the house, you, it's coming. You start thinking it's about you. 
انما اوتيت على علم عندي انما اوتيت على علم read the tafsir what this says is he's like i'm supposed to have this this is mine i'm supposed to get this what's crazy is this is this is this is what leads to what sheikh abdullah spoke about of entitlement now check this out i spoke about this in juma check this out la shukr ala al wajib la shukr ala al wajib i spoke about this in juma this is deep check it i was at i was at a brother's house our brother i went and ate at his at his house he gave me everything bro he like nine yards and the arab man mashallah you come you man whoo that's why shakes be struggling bro you got to roll with abdullah shake up though where he's at mashallah i was at, i was with shake up though this morning it was lunch time and my man only ate the protein yo no carbs <laughs> And Arabs and Daisies loved carbs. My man was like, "Nah, protein only." I'm like, "Shake, I'm with you." Oh, which Shake Abdullah? Oh yeah. <laughs> I I can't see. <laughs> Y'all know who I'm talking about. Come on. Anyways, uh, why you gotta do that, yo? See that? That's that brother. Little brothers trolling their older brothers. It don't stop. <laughs> I was at this brother's house. He brought everything out. And at the end of the meal I said to him shukran jazakum Allahu khairan and he says la shukr ala al wajib what does it mean it means don't say thank you for what is wajib what you're supposed to get what he's trying to say is habibi I had to do this for you but the saying is deep why here's my question how will you ever be truly grateful for what you think you're supposed to have How are you going to show shukr for what you think you're supposed to have? You can only show shukr when you think or feel that you were blessed. And by definition, blessed mean I don't even deserve this. This is purely from Allah. But we walk around entitled. We walk around entitled from with our with our wife, with our children, with our siblings, with all the blessings we have. I'm supposed to have this house. So that's why we never show gratitude for it. So one problem when you focus too much on yourself is you think the blessing is cuz of you. It has nothing to do with you. You are a canvas upon which Allah shows the beautiful colors that he can paint to the world. Another tweetable. You're a blank canvas. And on you Allah shows the world his blessings. It has nothing to do with you. Your abilities your strengths that whole swat analysis all of that is allah and if you weren't there he could give it to someone else and he would give it to someone else but here's another problem we struggle with another issue y'all jealousy the jealous person has a problem they're focusing too much on the ones bestowed and not the bestower they're focusing too much on who's getting what not on who's giving what and that's why the jealous person will live a life in torment because Allah is always blessing people if you're a hater yo i feel for you yo you know some of us in the room we're just natural haters natural haters they'll stop hitting your man yo they over there like hitting each other normally people just look down the row My man was like, "Bro, listen up." I ain't even going to look that way, man. Some of us we just got it's like in the reason is we're too focused on the mun'am, the bestowed people, and we're not realizing that it is we got to focus on Allah. There's a beautiful dua. There's a beautiful dua that we read in the morning. It's a, one of the adhkar as-sabah. Ma asbaha mi min ni'matin. Ma asbaha bi min ni'matin. او باحد من خلقك فمنك وحدك crazy dua this dua says i have not wake awakened this morning with any blessing and no one in the creation has awakened this morning with any blessing except that it's from you ya allah you know why i think this 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 dua is the cure for jealousy because you're using other people's blessings as a means to show gratitude your boy your 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 your, your cousin just got engaged perfect match up you've been struggling 
Yeah. Yeah, now y'all like, uh, I can't shake. I was with you till that point. I was with you. When you reach the level, when we and we will make dua, when you reach the level where you like, yo, mashallah, mabrook, bro. Alhamdulillah. Allah blessed you, yo. I'm making dua for you. You'll only do that when you realize the one giving, his, his khazana don't run out. His, his treasures don't run out. See, we operate on a scarcity mindset. We operate on a scarcity mindset because that's how people are. If, if he got the job, that means I can't get it. But you forgot who's giving jobs here, yo. You forgot who's giving risk here, yo. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give everyone everything. And he says, my dominion won't, won't, won't shrink like the amount of water on the beak of a bird compared to the ocean. When you focus on Allah, you have nothing but joy for all the blessings others have because they haven't taken from you. They don't affect you. It's, it's limitless. So don't focus on the mun'im. It's not about you. It's not about the other person. And that brings me to my last point. The objective of every blessing is to connect you with the mun'im. The mun'im, the giver. So what does that mean? Summarize everything I just said. That means my heart isn't connected to the new car I got. My heart isn't connected to the fact that I got it. My heart is only connected to the giver. The giver. And now I operate on this mentality of gratitude. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. What happens when you're blessed? You realize you have a debt to pay back. And now you start looking for every opportunity. You know what's crazy? Um, there's this amazing cycle I want to... I want to show y'all, it's, it's crazy. And I want you to write it somewhere, memorize it, whatever. So at the bottom of this circle, it's a cycle. At the bottom of the circle is the recognition of blessings. The recognition of blessings. Develop the ability to recognize, recognize blessings. How will you do that? I already said this. Number one, have people around you that remind you. Like, like, like close people. A lot of times we're focusing on having a lot of friends. You don't need a lot of friends. When you get older, you'll be lucky you got one good homie, yo. Like one good, like that's my ace right there. That's my ace for the sake of Allah. The other way you remind yourself of blessings, the brother's going to say, I'm lame right now. Yo, journaling, yo. Yeah, the brother's like, the brother's like, yo, we were with you just till that point, yo. One time I talked about journaling. A little shabab in the front. He's like, Shake, you, do you mean a diary? I was like, bruh. Like, why you got to use the most feminine term for it, bro? Like, you don't got to use the feminine term. Habibi's like, journal. It's a journal. It feels more masculine. You know what I mean? If you call your boy, he's like, Yo, what you doing? You're like, I'm writing my diary. You're like, bruh. Bruh. Maybe you're like, yo, I'm just writing some thoughts down. Like, All right, cool. All right, cool. I'm feeling that. So at the bottom of the circle is the recognition of blessing. What does that produce? That produces a, a mentality of gratitude. Start writing your blessings down. Write them down, literally. I have this. I have that. I have this. You can't stop. Once you start, you'll realize it's like you got to put a timer on. You got to put a timer on. When you recognize the blessing, you create shukr. What does shukr create with, the, what happens next? This is profound. In English, we say, be grateful. When we speak to Muslims, we, saw, we say, do shukr. L notice the difference between the verbs. One is be, it's a state. One is do, it's an action. For me and you, as Muslims, gratitude is not just a state. Sheikh Abdul, we were just talking about you, huh? mashallah. <laughs> Your brother was trying to roast you and you weren't here, bro. So I was protecting you. Yo. Yo, I, I want to take a tangent for a minute, yo. One thing I love about these brothers is they laugh, yo. For too long, we learned Islam too serious, yo. We're like, like you can't laugh. You can't have, enjoy ilm. You can't enjoy dars. You can't enjoy. You study the Sahaba, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, 
The Sahaba say, we used to sit around and joke about Jahiliyyah. We would be cracking up about Jahiliyyah. And the Prophet said, he was there. He wouldn't laugh. He would just smile. Like, y'all trip. <laughs> he would just smile. But this mentality of like, yo, those sheikhs, they joke a lot. Like, what are, what's up? No, subhanAllah. It's, there's nothing wrong with the joy of enjo enjoying ilm. So what I was saying is, in English, we say, be grateful. That's a, that's a verb of, of passivity. It's a, ver it's a verb that indicates a state. Be grateful. What do you do when you be grateful? You, no, you just be grateful. But in Arabic, and, in, and when we speak as Muslims, and you're talking to your boy, you're going to say, yo, show shukr or do shukr. How many times have you heard someone say, do shukr? Do shukr. Now check this. Ya'malu ala Dawood shukra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking to the family of Dawood alayhi salam and he says, I'malu shukra. Do shukr. Do shukr. Now here's where it gets crazy. Once you recognize the blessing and once gratitude is, is there, now what happens next? You grind. You look for every opportunity to pay back that debt. So now all day, I'm trying to do shukr for what I have. Now you, now, now, you ready? Here we go. The Prophet is sleeping one night. He gets up. And, and Aisha is next to him. And wifeys, they, they love what's good for you. So she says, she says, like, why are you doing this? He's standing in prayer till his feet are swelling. She goes, why are you doing so much? You're forgiven already. Look at his mentality. You're forgiven. You're, you already got Jannah. You got Jannah. Why are you working so hard? And this is the deep Islamic psychology here. Of, of, have, you ever, have you ever gone through a time when you... you don't raise your hands, okay? <laughs> don't raise your hands. <laughs> have you ever gone through a time when you can't motivate yourself to do anything? You just don't feel like doing nothing. Don't raise your hands. Don't raise your hands. And sometimes it could prolong itself too. Like you're no motivation. My prescription for that, based on Islamic psychology, is to recognize blessings. Start writing your blessings down. Start writing every blessing you have. That is going to create this feeling of I'm blessed. Not that I, I deserve this. Not that I'm owed this by God. I'm blessed. What does it create? What does he say? He's standing up to prayer. Wife, he goes, come back to sleep. You already forgiven. He goes, Afala akunu abdan shakura. He's like, no, I, I got I to gotta show shukr. I, I'm standing in prayer all night because I got to show shukr. I got all these blessings. This man was living in a small room. It wasn't a house. We can't even call this house a house. It was a room. He was sleeping on a mat that was made out of straw. And he woke up one day and Omar was there. And he has the imprint from the straw mat. And Omar looks at him and he starts crying. And, 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 and the prophet looks at him and is like, and that shows men cry too, by the way. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. This whole like masculinity, that's Sheikh Abdullah's topic. But me and him tag team, emotional intelligence and masculinity come together. He cried. Nothing wrong with showing emotions. That's healthy. Don't keep that stuff in, man. No matter what your culture says, don't cry. What's that? I know a brother, he was at a funeral. I'll come back to my point. There's a brother at a funeral from one of the cultures in this room. His grandmother mother passed away. He was in the janazah about to pray. He was so close. This man is like 23 years old. He was so close to his grandmother. And he started to cry. His father tapped him. And he said, stop. Hold it in. Man up. Man up. This kid's a scholar too. He studied. He's like, Sheikh, teach the people it's okay to cry, man. The prophet cried. The Prophet وسلم, he says, Afala kunu abdan shakura. Like I have to do something to show gratitude. I need to grind. I need to get to work. So my, my prescription for when you get in that rut of not feeling motivated to do anything, write down your blessings and start seeing them and realizing them. Recognize the blessing, create shukr. Shukr creates the grind mentality. And guess what happens next? Wada in shikartum la azidanakum. Allah goes. Now it's time to give you more. Now it's time to give you more. And guess what happens next? 
back to the bottom of the circle. You recognizing blessings again. You grateful again. You grinding again. You getting more. And you just live your life in this circle of gratitude constantly, constantly, constantly. You have two choices in life. You can live in the circle of gratitude or you'll live in the circle of sabr. Allah will get you to your rank in Jannah. There's hadith. He'll get you to your rank. You could get there through shukr or you could get there through sabr. That's it. May Allah bless us. Assalamu alaikum.